Hey, let's talk about appendix carry and why I don't think Jesus would want you carrying like this. Hey, this video is mainly for new CCP holders, people who are new to the gun industry, you're new to shooting, um, you're trying to figure out, hey, what's the best way to protect myself, my family, what's the best way to use my gun, the best way to get to it, what's got the best access. Um, there are some things that go into disciplines with carrying a gun. And so I'm gonna talk real briefly today about appendix carry for new gun carriers, as opposed to uh, you guys who've been doing this for a while. I'm happy if you wanna comment if you've been doing it for a while, but listen, please be kind, please keep the F-bombs off, please keep the uh, expletives off. I want this to be a family channel, and I really wanna address new shooters because there are just some things that you need to consider if you're going to have this shooting towards Roger in between your legs. So, um, I'm trying to be a little silly about as, as far as how Jesus would want you to carry, but there is a good comparison there. I'm going to give you that comparison towards the end. So this is a model of a Glock 17. Okay. If you're a brand new shooter and you just got your concealed carry permit license, you may have gone to the range. You may have taken the class like you were supposed to. That's reciprocal with other states. One of the things that generally new shooters do not have is they don't have trigger discipline. When you draw your gun out of most holsters, your hand is already there to go on the trigger. And how a lot of people get shot, there's also some videos right on YouTube where when they're coming out of the holster, I don't have the holster up front right now. I should have put one on, but I didn't. When they're coming out of the holster, they're already squeezing off a shot, maybe two or three before they ever get on target. If you're sitting in your car, which listen, road rage is a huge thing nowadays. If you're sitting in your car, Okay, you're not erect, <laughs> no jokes. You're sitting in your car. If you pull out and you got your finger on the trigger, there are two vital things that you're likely to shoot. One of them is between your legs. Roger will not be happy with that. The other is right down the inside of both your legs, you have major arteries. You hit either one of those, do you know how long it's gonna take you to bleed out? Your blood pressure is going to drop like this. You're probably going to bleed out in about 30 seconds. That's how fast it happens. As opposed to, let's put the holster here. Even if I'm sitting in my car, if I'm pulling out, if I get my finger on the trigger pretty quickly, I'm still going to shoot generally the seat. I might shoot, you know, the side of my butt or something pulling it out. But the truth of the matter is you're not pointing towards Roger and you're not pointing towards the major arteries in your leg. Is it faster? I don't know. Ladies come into our shop all the time, and they ask us, what's the most comfortable way to carry? Like, I, you know, what, what can you get in me that's, that's comfortable? So, you know, we have these. These are spandex pants. They're reinforced on the side. They're specifically made for holding a gun. A lot of ladies want to carry it in, the, in their purse. I don't really agree with purse carry because your hand needs to be in your purse. Most gun fights happen in under three seconds and under three shots. People don't realize how fast it is. It's better than not carrying it all. On your body where you can get your hand to it in a hurry is where it needs to be. I'm not even gonna address this back here. I'm just gonna talk about side carry and I'm gonna talk about appendix carry. So I kind of made a joke at the very beginning, like how would Jesus want you to carry a gun? Some people go, you don't need to have a gun at all. Jesus doesn't want you to carry a gun. He wouldn't have that. You need to go read Luke eleven twenty two. You need to go see what Jesus says about the strong man. It's literally the words in red. It's talking to you and me about protecting our things and protecting our family. Go read Luke eleven twenty two, and then come back and let's see how that discussion goes. So how would Jesus want you to carry a gun? Well, if I'm right and you carry here, let's say it's a little bit slower than appendix carry, but let's say I'm right, okay, and you pull what is the worst thing that can happen to you if you pull from the side? Let's say you really are faster from the front. We're talking about milliseconds at this point. My average draw from the side is between 1.8 and 2 seconds. Some days a little bit lower, I mean a little bit slower, some days a little faster. But I'm averaging like 1.8 seconds from here, okay, from here to on target. Let's say it's faster here, okay? We already discussed the worst thing that can happen if I pull from here, 
I'm gonna shoot the seat, I'm gonna shoot out to the side. If you really get trigger happy, you might shoot yourself in the leg. You can kill yourself in the leg, major artery still runs down there, but the arteries run on the inside of your leg. What's the worst thing that happens if you're gonna appendix carry? You're new to this, you get excited, adrenaline hits you, you realize you've got to take care of business, gun comes out, bam, bam, before you ever get on target. You just shot Roger, and you could have shot one of the major arteries on the inside of your legs. The discipline is more important than whether you appendix carry or side carry. So, what's the worst thing that happens, let's say, if I'm right up front? There's two bad things that can happen. Roger says bye-bye and never works again and you kill yourself because you bleed out 30 seconds after you hit a major artery. Again, I am mainly talking about new concealed carry permit holders, people who are brand new to trying to find a way that's comfortable. There is no way that's completely comfortable. Um, I don't notice my gun much here anymore, but when I take it off at night, I'm glad it's off. Uh, I don't, don't wear a gun to bed. Um, I know people who have them in the shower, they literally have guns in the shower. Consider a couple of things if you're going to appendix carry or side carry. Consider your level of experience, okay? If you've been doing this for a couple of years, you have the discipline to keep your finger off the trigger when you draw, then you might be more equipped here, okay? I've been doing this for years and years, right here on the side. I'm perfectly happy with that. So consider your level of expertise. Consider whether or not your gun is equipped with a safety. I do not carry a gun with a safety. And whether or not you're disciplined enough to pull it out under adrenaline and under stress stress and pressure, get your thumb on the safety and get it ready to fire mode and then push out. It's going to be slower. And remember, your average gunfight, three shots and three seconds. Actually, less than three shots and less than three seconds. It happens fast, and it's usually in the stop and rob or the Walmart parking lot. So, finger discipline. All right, don't forget, that is the kill shot right there. Is your gun equipped with a safety, okay? And are you mentally fit? Like, are you mentally, this is a big one and people don't really think about this. Are you mentally fit and prepared enough if an, if an assailant comes at you, are you mentally fit enough to engage? Those three things, consider those. You're a new gun shooter, it's not equipped with a safety, you're not really well trained on your, on your gun, you're not mentally fit. Carry it in the safest mode you possibly can. Some of us have been doing this a long time. You know, we've been hammered home. Keep your finger off the trigger. Make sure that you're pressed out. Don't endanger those around you. Be mentally fit. When the adrenaline hits you, you got to know what to do. Hey, please, like and subscribe. Hey, so I wanted to close out with a little side note. I missed something earlier in the video that I wanted to talk about, uh, and this is pretty brief. Hey, the reason I compare this to Jesus is because if Jesus is right, and I believe Jesus is right, if you reject him, what's the consequences? What's the worst thing that can happen? Think about that for a minute. If you're right, and I'm wrong, what's the worst thing that can happen? I think it's a real good comparison if you think about, you know, carrying in a dangerous way, you can lose your life. I think it's a real, a real consideration you need to make if you reject Jesus, what are the consequences? The consequences are pretty dire. Um, if you're gonna protect your family, you're gonna protect yourself, do it in the safest way possible. Hey, for here and for eternity, if you're gonna protect yourself, you're gonna protect your family, do it in the most cautious way possible. There's a lot to lose if I'm right. There's not much to lose except maybe a good time here or there if you're right. Don't forget to like and subscribe.